This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going to climb all aboard the Game of Trains. We're talking about this small little card game here from Brain Games. It's for two to four players, plays in about 20 to 30 minutes, maybe even quicker. Uh, quick little game, it's fun, you're trying to get things in order. Think Racco with special abilities, or Gamer Racco as I like to call it. Let's take a look, I'll show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. Here we have a two-player game setup of Game of Trains. Now normally you'd have this in front of you, and this would be off to the side in front of somebody else and around the table. But for video, I'm putting them both side to side just for the ease of use here. At the beginning of the game, you're gonna get seven you're gonna get a locomotive and you're gonna get seven cards. Those seven cards are gonna be placed in order from highest to lowest. So both people have their cards from highest to lowest. The object of this game is the first person to get their train, so that's the other way around, lowest to highest in consecutive order wins. Now at the beginning of the game, there's a start player, let's just say it's this player. That player will take one card and they will replace a card in their train and they will put that card face up out by the draw pile. This is not part of mine, it's a draw pile. It's a little clearer when you're playing for real, but to get these all in video here. The other player, uh, other players after that are gonna get additional cards. So this player is gonna get two. The second player, they're gonna discard one completely out of the game. And then they're going to use this. Wow, two low numbers. They're going to use this. And then they now put this. Now, these are open cards that people will be able to take from time to time up here. And any time that there's a, a card that is of a duplicate type, so if this card ends up going here, we have this same special ability here, those two would always cancel and go away. So that's just a rule just to keep in mind that anytime a same type of special ability goes there, it goes away, but for now we're good. So here we are, we have this and then we start. Your turn is very simple. You're either going to draw a card and put it in, in your train, or you're going to activate one of these card special abilities and get rid of a card. So I like the, let's see, uh, actually, you know what? I'm not gonna use any of these, I like this. I'm just gonna draw this. Ooh, a five, this is really good. So I'm gonna take this and I'm going to replace any card I want. The card I replace goes there. Now again, as long as this icon isn't already there, it's good. It'd be this player's turn. Ooh, I'm gonna use this special ability as a second player. I'm gonna use this protection. What does this do? This protection allows you to protect either your first card, your middle card, or your right card. Now I'm gonna protect this card. So what I do is I slide this like this. This card's protected. Well, protected from what? Well, I'll show you in just a moment here. This next player then also takes a card, 30. He is going to put the 30 here, and he's going to put this card here. Now it's this player's turn. He's gonna activate this card. This one says every player has to basically take the, their first card, or if it, this one's an end card and there's some that have a middle card that looks like that. This is why I protected this card because it's my lowest and I have a good number here. He has also has a good number here. I'm gonna activate this. When I activate this, it just basically goes away, it gets discarded, and this is essentially every, every player gets rid of their earliest card. So going clockwise order, uh, starting with me, but I'm protected, so I don't do it. This player would get rid of their card. It actually comes here, and then he basically takes a card off the top and puts it there, so now that just screwed him, which is, which is pretty good. That's a good example of that. So now it's this player's turn, he's gonna activate this ability. This one allows you just to swap any two cards next to each other. So this goes away, he's gonna swap these two because he likes, he wants to have that five right there. This player, well, he just draws a card. He gets an 11, cool. I'll put it next to the four. I'll put the 58 right there. This player is going to say, you know what? I'm gonna take protection now. Uh, I like my 48, let's see. Uh, actually, no, he wants to protect his, his card here because he doesn't want this guy to destroy that card again. So that becomes this player. And this goes on, so on, on, so on, so forth. So, sorry, you're either going to draw a card and place it, or you're going to activate a special ability and do that. Uh, there's a couple other special abilities. This one makes you move any card two to the right. 
So maybe I could, I wanna move this one up. I, I activate this one. I go, this one slides from here to here. And there's other cards with special abilities. This one would have you do two cards to the left. And so this guy might say, oh, you know what? I'll move this 21, one, two. This would slide down two spots. Let's move it that way. And this would get done. Uh, this one allows you to swap any two from the other side of a card. So let's say maybe you wanted to do this, like you swap like that because there's a middle card and two of them swap and then this would get uh, regard. Remember, you're only doing one of these on a turn and that's pretty much all the special abilities that are in the game. So it's very simple. You're either taking a card, you're adding it to your, your hand and you're putting the next one here. If there's a duplicate symbol, they get crossed off. Uh, or you're activating one of these by using it and activating it. And the first one to get all of them in the order from lowest to highest is the winner. All right, there's Game of Trains. I typically am a big fan of simple card games that have a good amount of depth and that I can play with both non-gamers and gamers. That's like my sweet spot. I call it my depth to complexity ratio. This game excels at that hugely. I mean, you're, you're talking about complexity of maybe maybe a, a tiny bit higher than say no thanks. I mean, we're talking very entry level here, yet there's some good decisions to make here. Now, when I was a kid, I grew up playing Racco with my grandma. And it's like, okay, you have some cards, you're trying to just slot them in order, you can take the card at the top, or you can take the card that somebody left you, and you're just trying to give them an order in Racco. Very simple game, right? This takes that concept and just adds a layer on there with some special abilities. This essentially is Gamer Racco, and I really enjoyed it. Um, simple choices, you're either, again, drawing that card and placing it, or you're going with the special abilities. Uh, I like, the decision in this simple game are awesome. It's like, okay, what am I going to do here? Am I going to, if I activate this special ability, I can, how many other people is it going to hurt? Those ones with those big, those big red X's. It's like, okay, well, I don't have to worry about this one because none of us have a good card there. So I can just leave that there because if someone takes it, it's going to hurt all of us equal and we'll just get some random cards, whatever. But if those two guys have good cards on their right and I don't, you bet I'm going to get that to screw them up. And then that, that leads into other decisions of like which card to protect, when to protect, um, and things like that. And then it, when you draw a card, it's like, okay, I want this card to go here. This is probably the best place to put this like 70 number, maybe like three quarters of the way up. But if I get, if I put this here, the card I give them is going to allow them to do something like get rid of my first card, which is not protected. And it's like a two. So I might not want to put it there. Maybe I'll put it to the right or the left. Not ideal for where I want to go, but it's going to give a special ability that might, hey, it might cancel out one that I think they want to use. So it's, it's really interesting, simple decisions, but great depth here for the simplicity. I probably like it best with two. And the reason being is it's very easy to gauge what they're going for and what you're going for and the back and forth. However, with three, it, it, it actually enters into that interesting thing of like, hey, one of us, this is gonna hurt. The other two, not so much, or vice versa. And that gives that extra element as to like the depth of the strategy. With four, it becomes a little bit more chaotic because you can't plan as much uh, because you know what you think you want to do, the card you want to take might not be there. The special blade might not, might not be there by the time it gets back to you. And there's more things to think about. Well, if I get rid of this, if I do this, he might do this, or he might do this, or he might do this. So there's a little bit more going on, a little bit more brain burnery, a little bit more downtime because you're thinking a little more. Still a quick game. Uh, and still I like it, uh, but I probably play it like it best with two, maybe three. Uh, I'll never turn down a game of four because I think the game is excellent. So if you're looking for a light card game that feels like something people are accustomed to, like Racco, but throw some stuff on top that's still similar and easy to figure out, but offers a lot of depth, this is an excellent game of that. And because of that, I am going to be keeping this in my collection, so let's do this thing right and induct it into my library with a saxophone serenade. This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com.